And eventually we will do a sleeper cab where we can send drivers out for multiple days at a time as we expand the charging network. One year after the delivery of the Tesla Semi, this revolutionary freight transport vehicle has proven its crucial role for PepsiCo's 12-hour operations, contributing to tasks such as transporting the Cybertruck to test locations. Throughout the year, it has solidified its position as the leading heavy-duty electric truck, covering 1,067 miles in a single day during the Run On Less event. However, the Tesla Semi may have undergone some influence from the Cybertruck, leading to updates in performance metrics compared to its initial specifications. So, how will this big rig change in response to these influences? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started. We all know that the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi share many technical similarities, belonging to the same categorization and both utilizing high voltage architectures ranging from 800 to 1000 volts. Some speculations even suggest the Tesla Semi has started experimenting with a 4680 battery technology produced at the Nevada Gigafactory similar to the Cybertruck among other shared features. Due to these technological similarities, the upcoming Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab may be influenced to some extent by what Tesla's released with the Cybertruck. Why will Tesla Semi probably update a new range for the upcoming version? No different from Cybertruck, Tesla Semi was also launched at the end of 2017 with two unique variants, quad independent motor and tri-motor. As far as we can see, the tri-independent motor will offer a range of 300 miles on a single charge and the quad motor will offer a more impressive 500 miles. Please note that according to Elon Musk, these ranges are achieved when the Tesla Semi is fully loaded with a GVW gross vehicle weight of 80,000 pounds and operates on the highway. This means that in an unloaded state, the Tesla Semi could surpass these range figures, potentially reaching up to 400 miles and 600 miles for the respective versions. Meanwhile, the Cybertruck's range after the delivery event is probably something enough to sway customers as it brings many different emotions. The dual motor increased to 340 miles compared to the 300 mile range offered announced before. But Cyberbeast is the opposite. This variant initially had many expectations when Tesla announced a range of up to 500 miles. But in the end, 320 miles was the final specification that customers received. So, is it possible that the upcoming Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab version will have a range adjustment? The answer may be yes, or it may be no, because to answer this question, we need to consider many factors such as the role of the two vehicles, battery technology, and finally, the challenges created for the manufacturer. First, let's talk about the reasons Tesla might adjust the range down for the Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab version. As far as we know, the addition of the bed system meant that the rig had to revamp the entire cabin area to arrange it in the most efficient way possible. It is common practice to extend the size of the cabin area to the rear to keep the cockpit in the most comfortable space. It's nice that we'll have a truck with a more comprehensive interior, but we also have to accept that adding the bed and lengthening the cabin will certainly increase the weight of the Tesla Semi. We wouldn't be surprised if it were claimed to weigh around 29 to 30,000 pounds, which would mean less payload capacity if combined with a very heavy battery pack. So reducing battery pack size is something Tesla can do. The average Tesla Semi day cap weighs about 26,150 pounds. The Fontaine Traverse HT weighs 17,700 pounds, and the remaining cargo boxes or loads are allowed to weigh up to 37,000 pounds, all adding up to about 80,000 pounds, a total load most efficient weight even if it is allowed to weigh 2,000 pounds or more than the diesel truck. In particular, the Tesla Semi 500 miles variant battery has a capacity of about 900 kilowatt hours and weighs about 10,000 pounds. We've analyzed the weight of Tesla's battery in previous episodes. 
Currently, the type of battery used for Tesla Semi at this time and in the future has not been mentioned at all. Everything is still just rumors about battery technology such as the 4680, 2170, LFP, or even pouch battery cells. In case Tesla will apply the 4680 type for the upcoming version of Tesla Semi, the possibility that we will have a smaller battery pack is even higher when looking at what the manufacturer has for the Cybertruck. According to Haggerty, a Cybertruck with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack needs 1,366 cells, and if a 900 kilowatt hour Tesla Semi does the same, that's at least nearly 10,000 cells for a Tesla Semi. It's too much and too heavy for Tesla to apply, so reducing the battery capacity to 800 or 750 kilowatt hours is something that will likely happen in the future. If this happens, we could very well end up with a semi-sleeper cab with around 400 miles or 350 miles of range that comes with a rather expensive range extender option package, something Tesla also does the same to Cybertruck. However, let's talk about the more optimistic possibility that Tesla will not reduce the range of the rig in the next version given how important range is to Tesla Semi and Cybertruck customers. The truth is that Cybertruck's range is quite important in influencing the travel experience. But considering the nature of a specialized off-road vehicle, range is definitely not the top factor that customers care about, because they care more about performance. Meanwhile, the Tesla Semi is the opposite. This electric truck originates from the mission of serving delivery work, right from the invention idea when J.B. Straubel said that Tesla used diesel trucks to transport transmission units and electric car batteries from Giga Nevada to Fremont were pointless, so Straubel, Jerome, and Franz built the Tesla Semi to serve the sole purpose of being the company's transport vehicle with virtually zero emissions. If it is specialized, for transportation, range, and load are the top factors for customers to consider. On the other hand, Sleeper cab serves the purpose of long-distance cargo transportation and allows drivers to make overnight deliveries. So the range is always a priority factor, no less than load capacity. What could happen to the big rig cost when looking at the Cybertruck? Next, the price of the Tesla Semi in the upcoming version will be 90% increased to over $250,000 when we look at the nearly 60% price of increase of the Cybertruck compared to what was announced in 2019. The often rumored price of $150,000 and $180,000 has been discontinued for this rig for a long time. Considering the economic fluctuations in the US and the world, at least it has reached the $200,000 mark in 2021 and is currently at around $250,000. This was confirmed when at a PepsiCo factory press conference in April this year, it was learned that the majority of the initial costs of most PepsiCo trucks are covered by state and federal grants. More specifically, the agency's executive director, Alberto Ayala, said the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District paid for 18 of the 21 trucks that will be used at the South Sacramento bottling plant with a grant of 4.5 million US dollars. This is an implication of the price of the big rig, and it is twice the cost of a diesel truck. But compared to fuel cost savings, the Tesla Semi can save $200,000 in the first three years. Keep that in mind. The price increase is also a way for Tesla to offset the costs of building the high capacity 750 kilowatt megacharger stations. For supercharger stations, the costs are relatively low, and Tesla is rapidly deploying them for Cybertruck, with seven stations being set up in just two days. Supercharger installations, on the other hand, are different. Each installation typically costs around $6 million and involves a much more complex process than regular charging stations. Returning to the expected price increase for the Tesla Semi, it wouldn't be surprising if it hits $280,000 for the upcoming version. Currently, in the electric truck market, almost none are priced below $300,000, with notable examples like the Freightliner eCascadia, Nikola Tre, and BYD ATT. It's important to understand that developing an electric truck requires a significant amount of time and money, involving manufacturing technologies 
entirely different from other models, with complexity at every stage. Therefore, even if the price increases, the Tesla Semi will still be considerably more affordable than any other electric truck on the market, boasting unmatched specifications. Moreover, commercial companies often benefit from financial support and exclusive policies, making the cost sometimes less critical for them. And what is the coefficient of drag on something like that? Like my Tesla, I believe, is what, 0.25? Oh, no, it's it? less than that. Point, a point two point two maybe. two point two two. Okay. Yeah. Tesla continues to quietly adjust the Tesla Semi. They just don't publicize it. We've learned about this through the revelation that the drag coefficient of the Tesla Semi has silently been reduced to point two two instead of the initially announced 0.36, as disclosed by Tesla engineers during a conversation with Jay Leno. There are likely other parameters that have been adjusted, but the manufacturer has not disclosed them at the moment to maintain focus on promoting the Cybertruck. Now, let's discuss some rumors related to the truck. The Tesla Semi has been subject to many intriguing pieces of information, and even we are unsure whether they're true or just oral jokes. How interesting is the rumored Tesla Semi? First, there's information that a team of Tesla engineers is on call 24-7 at PepsiCo, ready to work on and address any issues with Tesla Semis, and no one at PepsiCo is allowed to repair the Semis except for them. We believe this is accurate because the Tesla Semi is the company's only electric truck along with a fleet of other diesel trucks, so repairing this vehicle is also different, and Tesla engineers understand it better than anyone else. Having a dedicated team of Tesla engineers at PepsiCo could be an advantage even when this drilling rig rarely requires maintenance. This helps ensure that technical issues can be addressed immediately. Keeping the Tesla engineering team on site can optimize the company's workflow on logistics providing flexibility and maximizing efficiency in the transportation of goods. This enhances the performance and reliability of the Tesla Semi within PepsiCo's fleet, ultimately contributing to increased efficiency and reliability. Another interesting rumor, though not entirely implausible, is the speculation that the Tesla Semi is said to be using pouch batteries manufactured in Nevada. Initially, this sounds quite unusual, as all batteries produced by Panasonic in Nevada are cylindrical 4680 cells, and Elon Musk has not previously revealed any pouch battery packs. However, a hypothesis suggests that Tesla might have imported these pouch cells from China and assembled them in Nevada. Pouch cells have the potential to be well-suited for the Tesla Semi, and after the addition of sleeper berths because they are lighter, then cylindrical cells, they cost less, and are flexible in shape, allowing for customization in size and form in various scenarios. However, in terms of durability, they certainly cannot match the robustness of cylindrical cells. Finally, there's speculation about Tesla potentially discontinuing the production of the Tesla Semi soon due to its lack of profitability compared to other models. Specifically, some individuals suggest that Tesla initially produced this drilling rig because Elon needed a pump for Tesla's stock in 2017. Coincidentally, Tesla was on the brink due to challenges with the Model 3 launch from 27 to 2019, a fact acknowledged by Elon Musk himself. However, we believe that this is a rumor and a nonsensical joke from those who harbor resentment or seek to just taunt Tesla. First, the Tesla Semi has been part of Elon's long-term developmental strategy long before its official debut back in 2017. In November 2017, when the Tesla Semi was introduced, Tesla's stock rose by 2.5%, but in the following months, Tesla's stock gradually declined. By the end of 2017, Tesla's stock had decreased by 10% compared to the level when the Tesla Semi was introduced. Additionally, the initial development of the Tesla Semi was spearheaded by J.B. Straubel and Jerome as they looked at the inefficiency of diesel trucks with an electric vehicle manufacturer in mind. It's evident that the Tesla Semi was not a spur-of-the-moment decision to boost stock prices, but rather a strategic move aligned with Tesla's vision for the future of electric transportation. Moreover, producing the Tesla Semi to create a stock price pump is illogical because it targets the commercial sector rather than catering to individual consumers. The commercial truck market is much smaller than the passenger car market. 
If the goal were truly to boost stock prices, introducing models like Model 2 or other more accessible options would be a more reasonable choice than launching the Tesla Semi. The Tesla Semi, with its focus on commercial use, aligns with a broader strategy for sustainable transportation and is not just a tactic for short-term stock fluctuations. The research into a sleeper cab version of the Tesla Semi is exciting news for long-haul truck drivers. This version aims to provide drivers with a comfortable space for rest and relaxation during deliveries that span over 500 miles. Drivers for various companies will have a large sleeper berth at the rear of the truck, equipped with all the amenities comparable to a mobile home. However, when considering reality, the Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab faces a range of challenges with adding more space for the sleeper berth and increasing the weight of the vehicle. Reducing battery capacity to cut weight is an option, but it could also impact the truck's range. In the future, Tesla may adjust the range of the sleeper cab, potentially reducing it to around 400 miles or less, while offering an extended range option at a higher cost. However, there's also a possibility that Tesla will maintain the current range of the sleeper cab due to its significance in the long-haul transportation sector. The range for the Tesla Semi is not just a theoretical figure, but has been demonstrated through numerous real-world freight transportations, enhancing its reliability. Meanwhile, the Cybertruck may be more tolerant of a range reduction after delivery events, as customers are often more concerned about performance and off-road capabilities than range. So, what are your expectations about the new specifications for the upcoming Tesla Semi? And do you think the high price will be a factor that makes Tesla Semi less accessible to customers in the future? We appreciate your contributions. We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this channel. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.